Okie dokie, I'm going to be taking questions from the audience in a minute to get your thinking caps on about what it is that you'd like to know. Um, but to kick it off, I'm going to ask you guys a question. Uh, so I think like linking into Caitlin's speech tonight, we were talking about being natural, being yourself, people buy from people, the people you call in are just humans. So I want to get to know you guys on the stage. Um, please can you share with us something that you do outside of work, could be to do with a hobby or your mindset, um, that helps you in work. So something that's going to reveal something about you personally that helps you in work. Um, one thing I do on a daily basis religiously is I'm not one of these people that wake up at 5 o'clock and go you know 5 a.m. club but one thing I do try and do is at least go for a, an hour of outside whether that's exercise of walking running biking before work so that no music no podcasts you know do listen to those but yeah just try and get outside for an hour to, to really start my day um, but that's what helps me I seem to be honest <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Uh, what I like to do sometimes is uh, go dancing. Yeah. Uh, so, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm. <laughs> uh, the thing is, I'm very bad at dancing. But you know what? I. Uh, uh, Elaine talked about like how something that you do then and builds that your inner confidence like, and I am not great at dancing, but I enjoy dancing. And I'm not just talking about going to the club. There's so many like dance of, styles of dancing. Uh, I like swing dance, Lindy Hop, and you have to be very coordinated. And I suck at it, you know. So, but the the, the thing is. If you go, when you go, try and go on dancing, and you will see that you'll feel uncomfortable because you'll see people that are better than you. And if you try, you will see that you're going to build your confidence, your inner confidence, because you don't, you don't have to look at what other people do, but on how you can improve yourself. Yeah. Perfect. Love that. What's yours, Caitlin? So, what I would say having a good level of work life social life and relaxing time is really important so i kind of have organized days where i know this is when i'm this is when i'm going out this is when i'm seeing my friends and this is when i'm having time to myself just sitting down and i think that really helps you to be refreshed for the next day and just ready to take on the day really. indeed got to schedule in those breaks when you've yeah, got busy times so let's hear from you millie yeah, so I've um, actually competed in a strong women competition Woo! before. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I like lifting weights, and I think it's a big, big thing to do with your mindset. Like, you can't really stand at a, hun a bar with 150 kg on and expect to lift it if you're not in the right headspace. So that sort of thing, I try and bring to work and get myself in the right space. Love that. Perfect. <laughs> Go on, the Madison. I'm not going to lie, um, I am prone to getting in a bad headspace quite easily, um, but one thing that I've done frequently, and I've done this since I was 15 years old when my mom told me little by little, step by step, it's the little habits during the day that set you up for a good day. So an example, like if I wake up in the morning and I'm feeling low or I'm feeling like I've got a bad attitude, had a bad sleep or something like that and I have to go into work. It's a little habits that set you up for the day. So like making your bed, grabbing yourself a coffee, things that set you up well for the day and the little habits that you do throughout the day are going to train your mindset to thinking that you've had a good day, if that makes sense. But little by little, step by step, just do the things that you enjoy, even if it's just grabbing your coffee in the morning, making your bed, making yourself a good breakfast, something like that. Just add that to a bad attitude and you'll somehow get through the day with a better mindset. So something I do pretty religiously, it's a bit weird, but it's, it's probably just me, is I am constantly reading the news all the time. Just constantly reading it. First advised? thing in the morning. <laughs> First thing in the morning, last thing before I go to bed. Throughout the day I'm getting notifications, looking at what's going on in various industries, technical advancements, 
all sorts of things, kind of knowing where funding's going and this sort of thing. So it gives me a great, great kind of stead when I'm, I'm starting to look at who to prospect, what's kind of going on in the world, and, and kind of looking at that sort of stuff. Is your boss in the room? <laughs> no. <laughs> he wishes. Um, in all honesty, Luca's favourite hobby is talking about his Audi TT, so... Um, <laughs> Um, if I talk about myself though, I'd say I'm pretty organised in work life, but my personal life is very chaotic. Um, go out a lot, probably too much. Trying to do some more wholesome things, walking, podcasts, that's probably my, yeah, my go-to at the moment. Cool, Basic. some top tips there. Thank you then guys. So questions from the audience. What would you guys like to know from the panel? Are you going to do the run round? Yeah. There you go. Who's got the first question? First question. Over here, over here. Where, where, where? Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Shajid. Um, this question's for Alex. What did you do every day as an SCR to get to an AE position so fast? Thank you. Yes. Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, one thing I did every day to get to where I was was holding myself accountable by not pushing tasks the next day. So it's very easy to get caught up with, I need to do this, I need to do that, but oh, it's small, we can wait till tomorrow. One thing that I was quite religious on was understanding who I needed to reach out to why I'm reaching out to them, and the timely manner. And I might be a tad controversial. Um, everyone seems to hype on about personalization, personalization, personalization. Don't necessarily think that's entirely true. I think relevancy is a lot more important. So Elaine, for example, you know, owns a recruitment company, could send me a fantastic email that, Alex, I've got this great opportunity, earn this much money, blah, blah, blah. If it's not relevant to me at the time, if I'm earning more, if I'm not looking for a new job, I'm not gonna take it. So one thing that demand base actually helped me do with our own technology is hold myself accountable for relevancy, for this is why you're reaching out to this person. Doing that consistently so that I'm then, you know, hitting KPIs, overachieving on them, earning more money, you know, as an SDR for going into accelerators and yeah, so on and so forth. Thank you. Next question. Is that why you didn't reply to my email? <laughs> Oh, hi there. Um, well done, everyone. Sounded real cool, stories and stuff. Um, what I want to ask, actually, I spoke to everyone about this earlier on, was um, what do you guys do when you hit, like, um, PSLs or PVLs, you know, because we were talking about those barrier people? Oh, like a preferred sellers list? Oh, preferred sellers list. Yeah, does anyone, any of you deal with those? Has anyone come across that, where you've been restricted to sell to the business? Here we go, they have it with Prentify. You guys are the experts then. Honestly, just ask for recommendations. I think if they say, we've got a preferred sellers list, just say who do I need to speak to to get to get an introduction to that I think that's the first question and then open it like introduce yourself in a very open way I think no pressure just be relaxed and just be yourself I think it goes back to using your personality not putting too much pressure on it and treating like any other prospect but I think the first step is asking that question Thank you. hello my name is Ernest kind of like Ernest Jones the shop uh, I just wanted to know, like, how do you get past the nerves of cold calling? And that can be to, you know, any of you lot. Anyone got tips for nerves? Yeah? Cool. Cool. Go for it, go for you can it. have two answers. Um, so I think, um, as I kind of covered in my speech a little bit, just having the confidence to be yourself, as well as you can have all the cool scripts you want and all of the USPs, but I think doing your research on what you're going to talk about if you just fake it till you make it and go in and act confident, you will be confident. So, yeah. I mean, the nerves of cold calling, we all have them. I still get them to this day, especially when I'm reaching out to a big company and I'm speaking to an extremely senior person and I'm like, if I mess this up, this guy's gonna put the phone down and opt out. I've been there. But the way to get over it is to understand that they're a person they got heart and lungs just like all of us. They've got a mind just like all of us. They were once where we are. So you've got to remember they are real people. All you've got to do is basically act like you're talking to an actual person, like you're talking to them face to face. And it's actually easier sometimes over the phone because you feel like you can't see their facial expressions. Or the, facial, the facial expressions would make it way worse for me. But you've just got to understand that they are a person and you're having a normal conversation just like anyone else. Thank you. Can we Just ring Paul tomorrow. He'll take your call. There you go. He'll be nice. Yes. 
Hi, yeah. Um, so a lot of us are SDRs in the room, and one of the biggest things we deal with is obviously rejection. And I'd like to know how you guys kind of deal with the nose of every day, how you get past it, keep up the motivation to keep going. Uh, I laugh. <laughs> it's the way I do it. If I get any kind of rejection, the first thing I do is try and disarm them, because typically there's a reason they're saying no to you. So if you ring someone, you know, and you sell a certain product, and they say, "Oh no, we've already got that." or I don't want to speak to you, or go away, just kind of laugh and be like, well look, I get it, but you know, are you happily married to that product? Or are you, is there someone else that's come, I don't want to quite love on, is there someone else coming on that could be more attractive? But I think the main thing to do with rejection is laugh. Um, one of the things we do here is make it a game. So we have, oh I can't remember the tool, um, but whenever someone books a meeting, we have, it populates in a Slack channel. Um, but then also we have a channel for, oh, I got hung up on, listen to this gong recording, listen to someone being rude to me, and then everyone then gives advice on, oh, look, I would have said this. I know it's so easy to say in hindsight, but if you're then able to say to them, oh, look, okay, they said to you, I'm not interested, instead of just saying, okay, ask them why they're not interested. Or almost try and continue it, because I guarantee there'll still be a way in. You just have to be curious and keep asking why. I think one thing at Big to Cam, we like, it's quite similar to what you said, it's just always challenge it. Like, why are you so closed off? Like, what have you got that's so great? And also just like almost desensitize yourself from the answer. Like, be ready for the yes, be ready for the no. Like, the next call you can make, you could book in a meeting and it could be the most amazing opportunity for your A or whatever. But it's not life or death. Like, it's calls and we're in sales and you will book some more meetings. It's not the only call you're making that day. Agreed. Good answers. Can we get someone from the back? Can I get some ladies? Are there any females that want to ask a question? Go ahead. Thank you. Do I need to stand up? Yes. Okay. Hello, Emily from Venetrix. So I want to know, in terms of outreach, where have you seen your most success? And what's the most creative piece of outreach you've ever put out? Um, so, I mean, the, where I've been most successful is kind of humorizing prospects. So, like, putting a little bit of humor, maybe sending them a meme or, or a gif or something like that. Um, I ended up booking in this company um, a while ago. And, I mean, it was creative because it related to him, but obviously it doesn't relate to everyone. So, I'll reach out to them on LinkedIn, send them a voice note, and then if they don't reply to that voice note when I know they've read it, or it's been like a week, then I don't know if you guys have watched the Mr. Bean movie where he's like waiting for the car, like, like watching his watch. So I'll, I'll send that gift to them, like I'm waiting for their reply. And the guy came back and he was like, oh, that's so funny, my nickname's Mr. Bean in the office. <laughs> so that was that was just luck, and then um, they actually are um, in negotiation right now, all because I sent a Mr. Bean gift to this guy. So I would definitely say adding a little bit of humour, adding a little bit of personalisation is definitely the way to go about your outreach, hundred percent. Yeah, I think another thing is to just be yourself when you pick up the phone and talk to somebody. Just engage like a normal conversation you'd have at the pub. It's it's essentially rather than being really really like formal about it or really just kind of this is what we do. Just kind of engage, have a laugh on the phone, just be yourself, really. Um, I think one of the most successful ways SCRs at Demandbase have success or book meetings. Um, is via email, surprisingly, as well as LinkedIn. Um, there's a guy at the back called Louis. Uh, can you give us a wave, Louis? Everyone turn around and look at Louis. Um, woo! The other week, Louis booked 15 meetings in one week, um, all from understanding what's going on with his people. So we've had it where you send an email, people don't reply. You send a WhatsApp message, people don't reply. You send a, a voice note, people don't reply. Sending a screenshot of them actually being on your website, not their face, but what they've been viewing, so here's Elaine from Venetrix, she's been viewing this certain page, sending it to them, being like, I know this is relevant, why not now? Is there something I've done wrong? Have I, you know, do you want to speak to me next week? Is this now a bad time? Really works, actually calling out what they've been doing. Um, but yeah, that, that still works for me now as an AE too.
Amazing. So, um, final question. It, it, I know there's a lot of SDR leaders in the room. If there's an SDR leader and you want to ask a question, go ahead. Cool. Um, so, hi there. So, we've recently built a new in-house SDR team. Is there one thing that you'd wish your organization had done or your sales leaders had done to help you set you up for success that we can learn from? Got one for that? Quite brief, but I think for me, it's kind of almost not focusing on the numbers. Like I don't need, personally don't need to be told to make 10 more calls a day, but I really need you as a manager to enable me to feel more confident on my calls, listen to those calls and do those role plays and sort of help me to speak more naturally about that. So almost we, like every person in this room knows that if you make more calls and send more emails, you will get more meetings. But adding value and providing value in the, that outreach, that is what's going to make the difference, I think. I'll continue. Um, <laughs> guess I'm going to sell myself here, but apprenticeships. Um, the, the way the, I, and there's a couple of sales apprentices in the room, maybe they can speak from experience, but the way the sales apprenticeship is, is structured is it's across 13 months, so everything is staggered. It's kind of the perfect journey from like SDR to AE, so you're learning those different stages of the sales cycle as you go. So that consistent training, rather than just kind of giving them a, I don't know, a sales academy at the beginning and then leaving them to it, I think is really be beneficial, so definitely supported um, my team, so yeah. Thank you. Can we have a round of applause for all the speakers, please? Thank you guys, if you want to take a seat. Good job.